In this lesson we will be focusing on this option up here in the menu section, multi-problem sweep, and uh, the different options that we have there. Uh, the common denominator for these options is that it allows us to, to run uh, many data points at once uh, instead of running a problem one by one all the time. So we will go there. If we open this menu, um, we see that we have a number of different types of options. We have the sweep option, uh, which we will be looking at uh, soon. Another uh, part here is the multi-problem generator. That's another important of these options. So these are the two ones that we will focus on. Then we see that we have a, a, two additional options. One with titration, mixing with the titrant for defined composition. That allows you to, to mix two different waters. Uh, for example, you can simulate a titration. Uh, the second option that we won't cover on this lesson is a simulate evaporation of a concentration option, which sim simply sort of adds water or removes water from your problem. But as I said, we will look at the sweep and the multi-problem generator options. So we start with this one, the sweep option. Okay, and there's no point of doing that now, because before we start to use these options, we should have something defined on the main menu. So, so we get back, we can cancel this and go back. And so for the purposes of def uh, demonstrating how sweep, the sweep option looks like, we can imagine that we have a system where we will, would like to investigate the adsorption of zinc onto ferrihydride as a function of pH. And what are the results we would expect from this kind of experiment? So what we need to do then is to set up a problem that can simulate many different pH values uh, and uh, otherwise the problem is the same. And that is what we do during a sweep. So first of all, uh, to, do, to make this work, we need to fix the pH. Uh, so it doesn't really matter at this point what, where we start, but we can let, let's say that we start this um, uh, sweep at pH 3. We, we can, we can uh, change this later as well, of course. Uh, and then in this solution, we have zinc. Uh, let's assume that we have uh, 1 milligrams per liter of zinc. So we find milligrams per liter here. We go to sink in the component list. Here we have sink, and it should be one milligrams per liter, and then we add it to the list. And again, maybe it's not uh, realistic that we only have sink. We are bound to have something else here. We could have some kind of a salt electrolyte, and we can use one millimolar of sodium and chloride ions, just as we've done on previous lessons here. So uh, we go to uh, the concentration unit, you change to millimolar uh, on the component list. We need to define sodium and it should be one millimolar. We add it to the list and then we have chloride and it's also one millimolar per liter. So now we've added all that and the list should look like, yeah, it's here, you see that we have basically 15 micromoles per liter of zinc, that is the same as one milli, uh, milligrams per liter. Okay, and then we define also the adsorption reaction here before we uh, start with the sweep. So uh, we have, let's assume that we use this uh, Zombach and Morel model. So we specify one surface, we go down to this HFO Zombach and Morel, and then let's assume that uh, we have uh, 0.1 grams per liter of this uh, ferrihydride. Uh, so okay, so that's what we've done. We have 0.1 milligram and we accept the rest of the settings. We go save and back to main menu. Uh, okay, so now we have basically defined this problem for one particular data point at pH 3. So now what we will do is to add a number of other pHs to this problem so we can see how the zinc adsorption depends on the pH. So then it's time to go into this multi-problem sweep menu and we choose the sweep one parameter is varied option. And the parameter that is varied is the pH and that is 
incidentally the default option. Uh, you can also have a number of other things as a sweep component and it works just the same way, but uh, we, we will uh, use the pH. So we have some different text boxes to, to fill in now and we can start with a start value, the first data point. And let's say that we have uh, we start at pH 3, so, so that's our start value then. And then let's assume that we have uh, a 0 0.1 step between each pH value. That is generally a, a step or an increment that works well, so that will give us a nice graph in the output. So we can write 0 0.1 here. And then, of course, we need to state the number of problems. Uh, okay, so the question then is uh, how far do we want to go? So we start at pH 3, the next point will be 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, and so on. So let's assume that we go to uh, pH 9. Uh, so that's from 3 to 9, it will be 61 uh, problems actually. So that is the number here, the number of data points in the sweep that we add. Okay, so this uh, first uh, part of the menu is done. And then on the lower part of the menu, uh, we will uh, specify uh, the uh, things that we would like to see in the output uh, for all 61 uh, data points at the same time. Because otherwise, normally, we get 61 sets of output menus. Uh, and it uh, will be a little bit uh, laborious to, to make, make sense of it all. So, so uh, it's been much better if we uh, add all the things we're interested in to know here. And one thing that could be interesting is, of course, how much zinc that is absorbed. Um, and then to do that, we uh, will look for zinc and we find zinc here. So actually in this uh, list, we start with the different components and then we can also uh, add different species. And we can also look at saturation indexes of different minerals, for example. But now we, we focus on the zinc component, and when we choose that, we have a number of different options that we can look at in the output. And we will choose this total sword, or we can choose bound to oxide. It really doesn't matter for this problem because we have only one uh, adsorption surface defined, and that is this uh, ferrohydrite, this iron oxide. Okay, so we add this to the problem, and then that's, we can add a number of other things that we might be interested in as well, but we can just add sync total sword for now. And then we click uh, save and back. And now we have set up the problem, so we can run it. We click run Mintech, and uh, we get the output. Uh, what you see here is just the first data point, and you can scroll between the different output menus up here, so we can look at some other pH value, for example, so PA4, 5.4. But uh, more, uh, more practically, you can look at these uh, sweep results, the output menu that we defined here. So we click the selected sweep results. Here you see all the pH values that were included in the sweep and the sink, as uh, the sword amount of sink at each pH value. And this is all in mole per liter. Okay, so what we can do, we can print them out to Excel. And so we have it in Excel, and here, of course, we can make a graph. We can look, for example, at the pH dependence on the sword sink. So then we can just mark these two columns, and then we can add uh, uh, some kind of graph here. And so here is uh, our graph showing the absorption of sink on this very hydride surface as a function of pH. So we go here from basically 0% zinc sorbed at low pH and then up here at about pH 7, well, we're actually very close to 100% sorption there. Okay, so that was uh, one example of how you can use this uh, sweep option. And now we, have, uh, we can go back and we can start over again with a completely new problem because now we will demonstrate how to... Uh, and uh, um, use the other important option here, the multi-problem -prob generator. And to do that, uh, we will actually look at um, another uh, Excel file that, well, I have it here, actually. So here we have um, um, 
and water chemical data from some um, lakes mainly in the Stockholm area. Uh, so we can import all these to, to Visual Mintech and calculate, uh, well, for example, we can look at the saturation index with respect to calcite in all these lakes. So then we have 20 different lakes, uh, and uh, so we need to import these somehow to Visual Mintech. And the way to do that is to uh, go to the multi-problem generator. But before we do that, we click Reset. Okay, one thing to think about here to start with is if uh, there is any model that we need to define before we try to import things. And there is, because in this case we have DOC. And uh, the program needs, needs to know what DOC model we have. Uh, before we start importing things. Um, it doesn't need to know what alkalinity option we use actually, but we need to know the DOC option. So what we do is uh, we choose a DOC from this list. And let's just assume that we have uh, SHM, the SHM model. Uh, it doesn't really matter at this point uh, what concentration we add because that will be overwritten anyway when we import from Excel. But so we can just add one and we add it to the list. Now actually because we have measured pH in all these, uh, here we have the, the right Excel file, where we need to have a fixed pH as well. So we can just put it at fixed like that. The temperature, yeah, well that is also being overwritten. We don't need to do anything about that now. So we can go on importing. So we go to the multi-problem sweep menu. We choose the multi-problem generator. We add the number of data and we had 20 rows, 20 different lakes. So we add in the figure 20 and then we, we have this button popping up, import data from Excel. So we click that and then we need to find this Excel file. We click browse and then I need to remember where on earth I put this file, but it is here. I know where it is. Here it is. Uh, so now the uh, program knows the address, so to speak, to this Excel file, uh, the worksheet, a number that is, uh, which this, this only contains one worksheet, and that is number one. So we can leave it at one. And then we can then simply choose what we need to have. So we can see that the, we have the pH. So we need to define that. Um, so, uh, and that has no unit but it is present in column C. No, sorry, B. So that is the column that we have. And the first cell is actually the number, uh, the, the row number where this uh, uh, sort of array of data starts. And that is number three. So that is the first entry. So it should be B3 there. So we click add. And then we simply go on like this. So we find calcium in the next step, CA plus two. Uh, it's a milligrams per liter, so we uh, choose the right unit there. We have uh, the column C in the first cell 3. And then we simply go on finding the rest. So we have magnesium in D3. Uh, did I do anything wrong, wrong now? Yes, I did. But it's easy to change. So when you see when you have added wrong columns, you can just uh, change these uh, letters here. So Calcium should be number D, and magnesium should be number E. And then we need to add this bicarbonate. Uh, of course, we don't have any bicarbonate here, we just have carbonate. But usually when we have bicarbonate defined, it means that we actually have defined, uh, determined alkalinity. So that's what we're going to uh, uh, define here. So we find alkalinity, we choose the right unit, which is milligrams per liter of bicarbonate, and then we have uh, column C3. All right, and then we, after that, we go on with the next column, which is sodium, which and that is in F3, and that should be then in just in milligrams, of course, um, F3, and then it's potassium in in, uh, in G, and we have chloride in column H. And then we have sulfate in column I. No, not sulfide. 
or sulfite. It should be sulfate, SO4 minus 2. So that's column I. And then finally, in the last column, we have DOC. And uh, because we have defined this HS SHM model, that is the one that pops up here. And it should be milligrams per liter, and it's column J. And then we add that. Okay, so that's all. So then we just need to import. And if everything goes well, you get this uh, red text showing it's finished. And then we click on the quit button. And then we get back to this menu here where we can uh, define uh, what, th what we are interested in looking at the, at the output. And I was saying here that uh, the saturation index of calcite would be interesting to look at. So we find calcite in the list and the saturation index and we just add that like this. And then we click save and back. Now here then you can actually scroll between the different problems with this button and see what we have entered and you can change things uh, from this uh, menu as well. Uh, but if we are happy with everything that we have entered, we just click run Mintech and it will run all these 20 problems. And again, you look in this uh, selected sweep results and here is now our saturation index of cal calcite for all our 20 lakes. And as you can see, it's rather close to zero in many of these cases, meaning that is probably close to saturation with calcite. And then we can export again to Excel and uh, we can continue working with this data there. Okay, so that was two simple examples demonstrating how to use these different options in a multi-problem sweep menu. Uh, so that was all for this lesson. So thank you very much for now.